Opening up a nice fresh can of Lincoln X Caliber 7018, 1 8 and getting ready to fire up on this thing. Right away I noticed, okay, that looks to me like around 115 amps. Wish I had just maybe five more amps or so. Listen to how loud this machine is humming. I put this meter next to the machine with the camera on it so I could see what was going on, see where my amperage was, and pay attention to what's coming up here. See the handle move by? That's not supposed to be doing that. That means it's not holding amperage. Amperage is moving, it's vibrating and buzzing too much. So I had to stop right here and look into that. This is the little amperage mechanism thing here. It's a Miller Thunderbolt and uh, it's, it's gotten loose. So here's what the machine looks like on the inside. This will be real quick. I won't spend a lot of time here, but even the cooling fan is pretty loud. All right, the little shunt there that moves back and forth that changes the amperage has got some set screws on it. And in the manual, they actually call them noise adjustment screws. When they get loose, it buzzes like crazy and also won't hold an amperage. It drips. So after tightening those screws up, maybe half a turn, things got a lot better. I'm trying to wear a respirator more these days, and that's a problem with this, this helmet from Alex. It doesn't fit very well under here. Uh, this is a 3M respirator with 2097 cartridges. Really the only one I've found that fits under most of my welding helmets. Still humming a pretty good bit, but way better than it was before. We're going to pay attention to stops and starts a lot. That is the benefit of doing a two foot or a three foot or a four foot long T-joint. You get a lot of practice making stops and starts. I light up in front and come back down into the crater of the previous bead and try to weld over top of all the arc strikes. I bumped it up to 125 amps. The, the amperage is going to be something you've got to kind of balance out. You've got to have it hot enough so that you can make good restarts and get good penetration, but not so hot that you have to fight the puddle and constantly worry about undercut and the puddle sagging out and falling out with you. And also the higher the amperage, in my experience anyway, the more arc blow you'll tend to have toward the end of the welding rod. And uh, that can be a problem. Didn't get, I didn't capture any good shots here of, of arc blow, really, but I, I encountered some here and there, mainly up toward the very end of the, of the, of the piece. All right, second pass. Generally, you can bump it up 5 or 10 amps for the second pass, or probably a lot of times you could just keep it the same. What you want to do when you when you start doing a little Z weave like this is is to hold those toes, hold the edges for a count. That's where you're going to have problems. Don't spend a lot of time across the middle. The middle usually takes care of itself. Hold the toes, pause there so that you avoid undercut, and then move fairly quickly across the middle. Here again, I'm lighting up, striking the arc ahead, coming back down into the crater, and then carrying on where I left off again that's kind of it kind of exaggerated usually probably come in come down a little bit quicker than that also I try to stop on the same side every time and then and then light up on the on the side where I stopped that tends to help we'll do a quick restart here in just a minute You'll see me stop on the left and then light right back up on the left. The quicker you can get back in there, the better. If you if you take a long time, you have to go get a drink of water or whatever, then you need to really need the chip slag and brush. But I find that if I can get back in there really quickly, that's that's actually more benefit than any chipping and brushing that I can do. Because everything's really good and hot and just melts right back together when you if you can get right, right back in there when it's really really hot all right that's two passes time for the third pass now at 130 amps doing a little cue stick in here that that helps you guide 
the the arc strikes keep them in keep them in the zone where you weld over top of them and what I do there is I'll guide it with my finger but then eventually the rod gets pretty darn hot so I have to after things kind of steady up on me I'll kind of easily let go of the rod but not having arc strikes to me is is the the main thing they can fail you on a welding test one arc strike can fail a welding test so it's important to make your arc strikes in the zone where you're going to weld right back over them. Not the worst thing I've ever done, not the best thing I've ever done either, that's for sure. 